guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a survivor of the Leopolda Ghetto, of Riga Kaiserwald, Stutthof, and I was liberated when I was 13 years old. I come from Latvia, and I come back to Latvia every year since 1990, with a few exceptions. And why do I come back to Latvia? For several reasons. To visit those members of my family and friends who we who I loved and lost. Number one. Number two, to commemorate the Holocaust, the tragedy, the greatest tragedy that befell the Jewish history ever. to play. I liked to play. You know, I failed every single course in school, except one, English, because it was wizard. I always wanted to be where things are. I was a born yente, as we say. You, have you ever heard the term? Yente? Yente. Yente. Busybody. I was a born busybody. What the adults were doing, this and that, you know. I, that was my interest. One day I came home and said to my parents, I know how to count till 100. I know the ABC. I'm not interested in school except English. And uh, I just like to play. Did you have any pets growing up? I used to love uh, dogs. And my parents had some problems with my older brother and dogs when they found out that he ate from the same dish <laughs> as the dogs. So animals were banished. Yeah. When he was but, little, they were yes. paying attention, yeah. Yes. So uh, they were banished. And I would pick up dogs and bring home from the street. Uh -huh. and they were all banished. Strays. Yeah. Yeah. I would draw. What would I draw? Tanks, aeroplanes, and then destroy it. So in case the Germans would come and find something along uh, those lines, I could be shot immediately. So I always had to listen. If I heard something ringing the bell, it's immediately. Had to but this was my... Why were those drawings so um, life-threatening? Well, because I was drawing tanks, I was drawing aeroplanes, etc. You know, this was just an excuse to kill. Paruski? Paruski. Yeah, this was the yeah, kitchen towel. Yeah, this was my father's office, still oh. permitted, here in this room. Oh. My father's office. Father's office, yeah. Yeah. document here, Admir. Yeah. Možná? It will not be salon. This was our living room. This was our living room. Here, this was our balcony. 
on the third floor. This was our balcony where we saw the German planes. Uh, some of them flew so low that we could see the pilots and they were waving at us and we were waving at them from this balcony. Storage dump, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and this was a dining room. This was a dining room. Dining room, da. Dining, and this was a terrace. This is where you were watching. Terrace, yes, and this was a dining room. Yeah, and this was a terrace where we saw the German planes, where we were. Yeah. Bashoi vam spasiba. Bashoi vam spasiba. We interrupted the la your lunch, I see. Um, we kushili kakrasi. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't mention. Don't no, mention. Don't, don't mention. So sorry. So sorry. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Just leave it. Do svidanya. Did you hear something? Did someone tell you that? Don't draw those, it's dangerous? Uh, or did you hear no, this say, I mean, you tear it up after you draw this. I mean, you know, we were aware of things. I mean, I was only nine, ten, ten years old. I knew what was going on. I'd already lost my father. I knew that my father was shot. up very quickly. I sometimes think about, you know, a lost childhood, how my childhood was robbed, basically. My dreams was all, all gone down the drain. I very often don't like to think about it, but it does come back from time to time. I like to repress the bad things, but you can't succeed in repressing that entirely comes back. Deutsche Kultur. My father was, you know, he was, uh, he was convinced that Germans would never do this. Highly civilized, highly cultured people would stoop to that level? That, that was inconceivable. And we suffered because of it. They were all brought here before being shot. They were all brought to the women's prison. My father was shoved down the floor to the basement and the subsequently brought up and sent to the lighthouse where he was finally shot. Do you know how long your father was in this prison? No. It was all a matter of a couple of days. That's what eyewitnesses, including a Latvian who tipped us off to begin with, that he was completely and totally mistreated. Oh! It's even open. To give you an idea in our household, we were singing and reciting German poems, singing German songs, Heiden Röslein, sah ein Knabe ein Röslein stehen, Röslein auf der Heiden, war so jung und morgen schön, lief er schnelles nah zu sehen, saß mit vielen Freuden, Röslein, 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 Röslein. Röslein auf der Heide. Und der wilde Knabe brach's Röslein auf der Heide. Röslein wehrte sich und stach, half ihm doch kein Weh und auch musste es eben leiden. Or over here. Either here by ein Eingang, that probably went to the basement, that doesn't look like a basement. So the basement was right over here. where they apparently threw my father down this 
of the stairs. After, you know, he was a gastroenterologist, Berlin-trained gastroenterologist, who was the first one to use insulin here in the 20s in the fight against diabetes. He was sure Deutsche Kultur, something like this would never happen. That's why we didn't leave Deutsche. In my memoirs, I have a scene where my aunt tells, she just came back from Vienna after the Anschluss, tells my father, and I listened to it, um, what happened the day the Nazis walked in, so on and so forth. So, and um, he didn't believe that women were, were talked, uh, were ordered to take off their coats and wipe the cars of the SS people, of the Germans. Nicht deutsche Kultur, erzähl mir keine Märchen.